good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you may be in this beautiful, sunny planet of ours. This is Mark Lanehart, the Intuitive Prospector, here for another Metaphysical Mocha Mondays here on the Intuitive Prospector page. How, how are you guys doing this morning? Got a few people hanging out with me. I am back. Uh, there was no show last week. It was canceled because I was actually traveling on the road, but it's good to be back with you today. Uh, hope you had a great weekend. Uh, enjoyed the uh, the fabulous weather, at least what we're having here in Seattle anyway. Uh, so just going to give it a second. If you would be so kind to share out the page, I would greatly appreciate it because I'm a one-man show. I'm the host. I'm the editor. Uh, I'm the um, behind-the-scenes guy. Uh, but this morning, I'm going to be talking about karma. And one of the things that um, I've learned in my own spiritual journey is about my perceptions of karma, the universal laws and how universal laws work in our physical world as well as the unseen spiritual world. So if you want to learn more about the work I'm doing here in Seattle, uh, the Pacific Northwest, uh, or all around the country or world, um, I, you can visit my site at marklanehart.com. You can internet search the Intuitive Prospector. You can find me at Best American Psychics, Best Psychic Directory, or Aerial Spiritual Community. Those are the three communities that I'm a part of in the work that I do. And you can get a hold of me through uh, video, phone, uh, in person. Um, and I'd love to do a little spiritual prospecting for your own spiritual goal. So, with every Metaphysical Mocha Monday, the one requirement we have to have for the next 30 minutes as we do a little bit of uh, spiritual prospecting, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I do have a bit of a cold. So if you could send me some healing, that would be fantastic, getting over a cold. But we need some coffee. We need to have our coffee. We need to have our tea. And let's do a little uh, prospecting for some answers and some inspirations. That's what this show is all about. It's an inspirational uh, show uh, for inspirational messages for the week ahead. So I um, want to just talk real quick. There's a couple quotes that I had pulled up about karma and my even my own misperception of karma. Uh, you know, for me, karma is not... Uh, a series of punishments. It's literally a series for me. It's a series of teachable moments. Now I've always heard, you know, um, you know, karma being uh, put into the format of, of being a punishment. But again, I just, you know, for me, it's about understanding um, uh, what you do comes back to you, so you can learn that as well. So we're going to be talking about that. Uh, you, you know, there's a there's a saying that I had. Let's see if I I, um, I, I like to say karma isn't a bitch. It's a mirror. So it's really about what you do and the vibration that you give out into life and what comes back. And again, how can you learn through those uh, series of teachable moments? So, uh, you know, you can you, we'll, we'll talk about some of the laws uh, that, you know, uh, apply to the physical. Because, you know, as a spiritualist, as a medium, as a psychic, I get a lot of people that, you know, there's just a lot of different ideas out there. And I, I really try to bring my spiritual path to a... Uh, the laws of science, the laws of physics, the uh, the laws that we have here in a physical domain. So you get into, you know, karma can have a lot of different perspectives, a lot of different belief systems. And so this morning I'm just going to talk about karma, universal laws, and a series of teachable moments. You can take what you want from it. Um, you don't have to agree with it, um, but it's just, you know, presenting the idea and planting seeds for uh, maybe, you know, thinking outside the box for your week ahead. So for those that share out, I do track those that uh, yeah, like the page. Uh, the Intuitive Prospector and uh, get on my YouTube channel which is in the description field of this video so make sure to subscribe to my videos uh, over 200 plus videos on my Soul Adventures library on YouTube and this show will be streaming also through YouTube and after the show's over here at 8 30 uh, stick around for the prospecting Q&A after show I get a lot of people that love that show uh, that's where I actually have a direct conversation with you so if you're commenting right now I've got the comments turned off I'm not seeing your comments uh, so I can get to the topic and the inspirational message uh, for this week but the prospecting Q&A after show which starts at 8 30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time 11 30 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time I'll have a direct conversation with you. We can bring you on live video. Uh, I've got my business line all set up, so you can call me if we're having difficulties because it is Mercury retrograde. And uh, how's that Mercury retrograde working out for you guys? It's been kind of an intense Mercury retrograde, and we got it for another week or so, I think till the 24th or the 28th. I'll have to look at that. But um, the prospecting Q and after show is a really fun way to uh, directly connect with me. It's my way of giving back, being a service, pro bono work. I'll go for about 30 minutes, 40 minutes, sometimes an hour, give you a free reading, a spiritual chat, might be mediumship, might be psychic, might just be working with your own intuition and awareness. But for those that help me share out the page at the end of this month of March, uh, you'll, you'll go into a drawing and I'll pick a name out of the hat, or the spirit will pick a name out of the hat. Uh, so for new subscribers on my YouTube channel, Mark Lanehart, The Intuitive Prospector, or sharing out the pages to help me grow the page 
um, organically is uh, how I work. So I'd really appreciate it if you could do that. Uh, so like I said, uh, karma isn't a bitch, it's a mirror. And karma has so many different, um, you know, uh, different ideals and beliefs. And, you know, I always think of Paulo uh, Cujo, who um, said, a mistake repeated more than once is a decision. So what we repeat, um, you know, the, the, there's a saying that the lesson repeats until it completes. And that's really based on us. Do we want to continue with this lesson? We choose our free will and our choice. Uh, and it's going to repeat until it actually completes, and then we go into a new lesson. That's how I, I think of, of karma. Um, but I don't look at karma as a punishment, and it just it really does um, it, it really does have this uh, perception that karma is a bad thing. Oh, you're going to get karma; it's going to be bad. No, it's just what you're what you're doing now. If you're doing good, then it, karma shouldn't be a thing for you. It should be okay. I'm doing good. I'm, I'm uh, helping others. I'm you know I've got a positive mindset. I'm vibrating out, and what that goes out into the world, that ripple effect should come back. And if it comes back, it's based on your perception as well, right? What's your perception with good and bad? Um, you know, some people, I remember a guy when I was in the Coast Guard, I was in the Coast Guard for eight years and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm an optimist. I'm, you know, the glass is always half full. I always try to look on the, on the, um, the bright side of life and kind of that Monty Python song, always look on the, on the bright side of life. Right. Uh, and then there's other people that are just going to be opposite because no person is the same. We're all unique. And you can do that just looking around how many different unique people there are. We were in Vegas last week and we were down at Fremont street and we were just watching all the people, just people watching and we're all uniquely, um, different and unique and when you um, you know have that belief system uh, this guy you know people will have opposite of your beliefs obviously and you know people say oh the glass is half empty I remember the, a gentleman saying well I never even got a glass so you're at the you, you got positive you've got negative and then you got way real I don't even know what to call that but he would say shoot I never even got a glass I don't even know what the hell you guys are talking about so that's always stuck with me um, and so you know karma is you know um, it's bigger uh, than you'll ever need to be as far as the fact that karma is a series of teachable moments. And when you start to apply, you know, the, the different laws, we've got the, the great law, which is, you know, most of you would know this, uh, as you sow, so shall you reap. It's, it's, known of the, it's known as the law of cause and effect. Um, the, the word itself, karma, is a Sanskrit word for action. That's all it really means. Karma just really means in, San, in, in Sanskrit, it just means action. It just means I'm a big believer that your intentions, and I'll do maybe I'll do a show on intentions. I think I may have done some. It might be in my YouTube library. I've done so many shows, I don't know if I've actually talked about intention. But I'm a big believer in intention for the fact that energy follows your intention. Uh, and, you know, it, it's, it's equivalent to Newton's law of every action must have a reaction. So if you, for those that follow Newton, that follow science, uh, when we think, when we speak, when we act, when we initiate a force, when we initiate it, that will actually react accordingly. So if you apply the news of, of what Lawton, uh, uh, Newton's law of every action must have a reaction, I look at that. I look at that in our physical world. And, you know, it's kind of like a, the series of a, a, like a, think of yourself standing with a series of dominoes and then you push the domino. So what's going to go around is going to come back to you. That's how I kind of look at karma. So I was, I, I, you know, for this morning's show, I would just say stop being afraid and start being empowered in the worlds of karma and reincarnation, if that's your belief. Um, you know, what you give out, your vibration, your intentions. Really step in uh, and be empowered and step into that power uh, to set your intentions for the life that you want today. Because there's no guarantees for tomorrow. And I've, you know, a lot of the work I do today is because of great tragedy and trauma. Uh, and it, it's really taught me that there is no guarantees for tomorrow. All you have is today or what I call the magic in the moment. So again, some of the laws that we refer to, um, you know, it's uh, the great law, the law of cause and effect. Uh, whatever we put out in the universe, it comes back. Um, you know, I don't expect everybody to uh, agree. I, I would, you know, I think it's always healthy to have debate uh, about um, karma. So if you want to put some comments in, I'll come back after the show and review your comments, or you can hang out with me on the prospecting Q and A after show uh, at eight thirty, and we can continue the conversation and debate. Debate, but in in if it's going to be a debate or. Um, uh, a conversation, please be kind, caring, and compassionate because I'm not about dividing people. I'm about bringing people together and um, bringing people to um, the center. Uh, so, but I think it's still important to have your own uh, perception and viewpoint. But, you know, what, uh, 
if you want happiness, if you want peace, if you want love, if you want friendship, uh, then we should be happy. We should be loving. We should be peaceful. We should be a true friend to people. That's that's what you know the great law is all about. It's about the law of cause and effect. Now I've learned many times through the law of cause and effect. I've learned many times through karma. Uh, you know I've, I'm I'm a big believer. Like I said, uh, the lesson repeats until it completes. And then we move on to a next lesson. And I found this even working with the, those in the spirit world that are no longer here anymore in the physical world. There's still hierarchy on the other side. There's still learning. There's still growth. And we don't just, you know, from I've done hundreds of readings now, guys. And I, I haven't found anybody just sitting on a cloud playing a harp. Everybody keeps talking about the, the growth and uh, the learning and everything that you want to access. Because if you think about how much information and knowledge is really out there over time, there's a lot of stuff to learn. It's like going on to a, a spiritual college, I guess. You kind of graduate from the physical world and move into uh, what a lot of us spiritualists call Summerland. We move into uh, a new, um, I don't know, a new uh, world, an unseen world. Uh, very similar to the wind. We see the effects of the wind, but we don't actually see the wind with our eyes, but we all accept that the wind is real. Uh, or I, I equate it to you're in the womb for nine months and you're breathing liquid and all of a sudden there's this little white hole of light and you pop out and all of a sudden you get, the, you get spanked on your ass and you're breathing air. And it's, you know, for me, death is the, very much the same thing. It's, it's going through another series of, uh, uh, maybe it's a light at the end of the tunnel, I don't know. Um, my near-death experience didn't incorporate a, a, a light at the end of the tunnel. It had literally just incorporated me lifting out of my body and going up. And you know that's why people refer to heaven as going up because of the near-death experience or OBEs, out-of-body experience, or NDEs, near-death near experiences. Because people have, and I felt this myself just briefly, real quick, where you start to rise up and leave your body and you're looking back at your body. So our perception of heaven is up and our perception of hell is down, but we live on a round planet. So there is really no up or down if you think about it. It's, it's multidimensional. And I, like I said, and all the people I've connected with in the spirit world, um, they talk about the, the summer land and the, and the growing and literally going from breathing liquid to breathing air to breathing at not at all because you don't need lungs in the spirit world. But the hierarchy is still there. The uh, love is still there, and that's the only thing I found that transitions over is the love. But also um, the learning, the learning never stops, and uh, you know it's always just been an interesting um, point for me. And so I thought I'd just share that this morning. So we've got the great law, we've got the law of creation. Life doesn't just happen; it requires our participation. Uh, you know, when we are in one universe, both inside and out, whatever surrounds us gives us clues to our inner state. So be yourself, surround yourself in, in what you have present in your life. And, you know, it, it, it is a big part of the law of creation is based on, um, I always say things are born twice. First in your mind and what you want to bring out of your mind um, through action, through creation, uh, to create the things that you want. Um, that's where things are born twice. First here and then what you do to bring out into your reality. So look around you and see all the different things that somebody else's thoughts become part of your reality. That's, that's the cool thing about um, creation, the law of creation. So be yourself, surround yourself uh, with what you want to have present in your life. We also have the law of humility. Now you guys have probably learned this law many times over and over again. As, as, a, as a guy, uh, we tend to be more confident, more arrogant, more egotistical, uh, and especially in the work that I did. I did eight years in the, the U.S. Coast Guard. I did several years, 13 years in the fire service. So, you know, you have to be confident in what you do, but there's also, you have to be, you know, my motto is uh, be humble or get humbled, and I've been humbled many times. So, you know, the law of humility is, you know, what you refuse to accept will continue for you. Again, what we resist persists. If what we see is an enemy or someone with a character trait that we find to be negative, then we ourselves are not focused on the higher level of existence. We're focused in on the physical of, you know, of, of people and being negative, and that can really impact you. So be mindful of that. And that's the law of humility. Uh, be humble or get humble. That's something I always try to remind myself. The law of growth. Uh, wherever you go, there you are, is the old saying. We, uh, for us to grow in spirit, we must change. And, uh, you know, because we're spiritual, energetic beings first, here having this physical experience on earth, uh, having this physical experience of learning, of, um, of you know, different jobs, different locations, uh, different uh, relationships, if you will. Um, the only given we have in our lives is ourselves, and that is the only factor we ever have control over. So think about that for a second, because you're only ever in control of your own thoughts, and that's the law of growth. Um, you know, when we change and, and 
what we are within our heart, our life follows suit, and it changes too. So it really starts with you, is what I'm trying to give you the, the, the message this morning for karma. And again, don't look at karma as a punishment. Look at it as, as a series of teachable moments. And not every teachable moment is enjoyable. Think about your own path, your own going to school. Maybe there's a subject you just did not like, but you had to go through it to get your diploma. Same thing with college. You had, for those of you who went to college, there were some classes I took in college, both in my undergrad and my graduate studies, that I just did. I was like, I don't get the point. What I have to do this? You have to go through because there's some growth that can take place from that, and you have to do it to get your diploma. So you have to jump through these certain hoops. So we've got the laws of responsibility. Whenever there's something wrong in our life, there's something wrong with you. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, even if somebody is coming at you and they're totally negative, you have a choice and a, and a responsibility to either stand up to that or step away from that. Do you want to be right or do you want to be at peace? That's always a, a thing that I, when I, especially in this day and age with the amount of debates and conversations and division, I just look at it, do I want to get into this conversation and be right and, have, and, and, and inflate my ego, if you will, and have my ego be right, or do I want to be at peace? And that's what we call the law of responsibility. We mirror what surrounds us, if you think about this for a second. So when it's, you know, the law of responsibility, and responsibility is even one of the principles of um, spiritualism. So I'm a member of the Spiritual National Union of England. So I'm a, I'm a British trained uh, mentor, uh, psychic spiritual medium for the last six years now. And they talk very much on the, in fact, here's the book right here, um, Philosophy of Spiritualism. So um, what I love about spiritualism is because it doesn't get into being a religion, even though it is classified as a religion in England, uh, they work with uh, science a lot to bridge that gap between science and spiritualism. Uh, it's, I, I just posted a picture recently, showed two pictures, it showed a lady looking out of a doorway and it said religion on and it was just a few colors and just kind of the universe and then the picture next to it said religion off and the whole universe came alive because again spiritualism is about your own journey, it's about your own adventure, religion is more of the study of other people's philosophies, uh, dogmas, doctrines and following that. Uh, spiritualism um, in, in the fifth principle they talk about personal responsibility, it's right there, personal responsibility. Uh, and I know it's backwards on, on the video, but you know the, that's why I really uh, was aligned to spiritualism because it is about your personal responsibility as well. And a lot of people don't want to take responsibility. Even the work that I do as a psychic and medium, people want to put their stuff on me and their responsibility. And I'm like, no, it doesn't work that way. This is your, this is your journey. That's your responsibility. We must take responsibility for what is in our life. And, you know, when we move from that law of responsibility, then we get into the law of connection. Uh, even if, if there's something, um, you know, each step that we do leads us to that next step. Uh, and then so on and so forth. The journey of a thousand miles begins with that single step. Past, present, future, they're all connected. That's the law of connection. Um, and then we get into the law of focus. Uh, you can you can you cannot think of two things at the same time. So you want to focus. And for a lot of us, we have a lot of stuff going on. Especially women. Women are very good at multi thinking, multitasking. Men's not so much. Some of you guys out there can, uh, but women are really good at um, focusing on many different things. But then you lose the law of focus because when our focus is on our spiritual values, when our focus is on something that's value of us, it doesn't have to be spiritual. But when you focus on something of value. Um, it's impossible for us to have uh, lower thoughts such as greed or anger or lack of patience because you're, you're focusing in on those things of, of um, value. And greed and anger and um, lack of patience is not, does not bring value to uh, the law of focus. So just this morning, I'm just sharing with you, I just covering you know, the, the, the great laws, the great law, the law of creation, the law of humility, the law of growth, the law of responsibility, the laws of connection, the law of focus, and just you know, take, a, take a second to research those if you've never heard of them before. Uh, great, that's what this show is about. It's about inspiring you and, and getting you to think outside the box and maybe do something uh, you know, that you... I haven't thought about before, and um, and then here in about 10 minutes, we're going to be starting up, oh, about 8 minutes now, time's flying, uh, we're going to start the prospecting Q&A after show, where I'll have a conversation directly with you, so you can, uh, we can do uh, some spiritual chats, a reading, could be mediumship, psychic, I have no idea, there's, there's never no planning in what I do, in fact, this morning during my meditation when I woke up, I started thinking about karma last night, uh, but um, this morning it really came into uh, focus, remember I was just talking about the laws of focus, um, just for the just for the fact that um, I wanted to talk about responsibility and the universal laws that apply 
on your creativity, um, you know, on your focus, on your responsibility. So the karma, the one, the one thing I think that really stands out in my mind is karma and the lesson of time. So when a bird is alive, it eats ants. And when the bird is dead, ants eat the bird. So time and circumstances can change at any time. So if you think about karma this way, don't devalue or hurt anyone in life. Uh, you may be powerful today, and I think we're seeing some of that in just modern, current times with certain people um, that you know they think that they're very powerful right now, and they are. They they have a lot of power in what they do, a lot of influence, a lot of money. Um, but remember, time is more powerful than they are. And uh, you know, one who makes a, a million, uh, one tree makes a million matchsticks, but only one matchstick is needed to burn a million trees. So be good, do good. I always like to say be kind, caring, and compassionate. The golden rule, treat people how you like to be treated. Uh, leave things better than how you found it. Uh, some of you that work in the corporate world or some of you that see that have that same mentality, it's, it's very frustrating because you're trying to make change and being a change agent isn't always easy. But just remember, when the bird is alive, it eats the ants. And when the bird is dead, the ants eat the bird. And don't forget that one tree makes a million matchsticks but it only takes one matchstick to burn a million trees. So just some uh, you know lessons of time. Time is uh, you know that's our greatest commodity. I've always said it's uh, you know your greatest uh, commodity is time because at the end of the day you're another day older and you can't get that day back. So today we're talking about. Um, let me get a cup of. Give me a drink of coffee. I have my cup of coffee here. So today we're talking about karma, universal laws, and. Karma not being a punishment, but a series of teachable moments. Uh, and, you know, like I said, karma, if you break down the word, I always like to look at the words. Uh, why do we do what we do? Why do we use the words that we do? Your words do matter because they carry vibration, but why do we have all these different words that we use? And, and karma really is a Sanskrit word for action. That's all that it means. It's equivalent to New Newton's law of every action must have a reaction. So what are you doing in life? You're going to get back in life. Um, and it doesn't have to be negative. It doesn't have to be a punishment. It's literally just a series of teachable moments. So that's your inspirational message for the week. So don't let uh, uh, karma freak you out or you know get in that place of fear. I want to give you your, your prospecting crystal for this week, your numerology number for this week, and your totem animal spirit for this week. So this morning, <clears throat> excuse me, and bear with me because I do have a cold here. Um, <clears throat> and I have to save my voice for radio as well on Wednesday because every Wisdom Wednesday we have Inspired Living Radio, our internet-based show that we are moving into our fourth season. So if you want to check that out, we have amazing guests, call-in lines. It's a lot of fun. And if you guys are liking my new, intu new Intuitive Prospector page, uh, make sure to like it and turn on the notifications because now I've changed it to where I have top fans. So never had that before uh, do, where you can be a top fan and interact with me and um, you get a badge and all sorts of fun stuff so check out the intuitive prospector page a new video format that I have set up it's a lot of fun but this morning I'm going to share one of my favorites this is called a peach moonstone and for those of you that have never if you've never worked with crystals give it a go because there's some amazing things think of think of them as little amplifiers for what you want to accomplish now when I bought this moonstone uh, about three years ago it was clear like this and I'll, I'll just bring it to the video so you can see um, how clear it is. And over time, a person, and I don't know if you can see that clearly on the video, um, but a, a, a silhouette with a person, and it almost looks like their heart right there, the head, the body kind of kind of morphing down. See how this body kind of, there's the head up here. It's almost like their heart, their arms coming down. This wasn't here, guys, when I first bought this. This has developed over time. And I, it's almost like it's like a key to a portal almost where, you know, the spirit world can come through. So this is the Peach Moonstone. And the Peach Moonstone is a stone of new beginnings. And for some of you, you may need some new beginnings, especially if, if you feel like karma and those, those uh, universal laws that I was just talking about, the law of creation, the great law, the law of humility, the law of growth, the law of responsibility, the law of connection, and the law of focus. Some of you may be in a place of humility where you are ready for a new beginning. So you may want to um, check out the moonstone because, you know, as its name suggests, it's strongly connected to the moon and to intuition. And we're moving into a new, we've moved into a new moon. So like the moon, the stone is uh, reflective and reminds us that as the moon waxes and wanes, so everything is part of the cycle of change. And everything comes through cycles. Just like the snow, the spring is right below the snow. And as the spring starts to pop through, the snow disappears and we go through cycles. Just the same thing with the physical journey. We all go through cycles. Uh, and it's a, mo it's a most powerful effect. 
is that it's calming the emotions. So if, you're, if your emotions are really strained right now, then grab yourself a peach moonstone. It doesn't have to be in the ball form. I, I just liked it because I can hold on to it. And let it uh, be the stone of new beginnings for you. Uh, let's see here. Just another tip for you. Um, the uh, totem animal spirit for you this week is the pigeon. Uh, so if you if you see the pigeon, pigeons are carriers of communication. And being that we're in Mercury retrograde right now, which Mercury is the god of communications or lack thereof for the next week, if you see a pigeon, uh, just you know maybe you're about to uh, receive an important message from an unexpected source in an unexpected way. So be open to that if you're seeing the pigeon, uh, and keep in mind of your goal that's just ahead. Stay with it, and you will get there. So I like to say stay the course if you can. And no matter where you're at in the world, you can draw on this feeling of home by closing your eyes and remember what it's like and breathe in the feeling, uh, just like uh, pigeons return to their home. Uh, and, it, again, it's more about just pre be prepared to receive unexpected messages if you see a pigeon, like a carrier pigeon carrying a note, uh, in an unexpected ways. So that's your totem animal spirit is the pigeon. Uh, the uh, peach moonstone is your crystal for the week. Your numerology card is number 66. The 66 is representation of self-love, self-guidance, self-focus, and it's all about healing. So this week, really work on yourself as we move out of Mercury retrograde in the next uh, few weeks here to really focus in on healing and the laws of karma. And what is your karma? Again, not as a series of punishments, but as a series of teachable moments. And with the different laws that apply here to the physical plane, uh, pay attention to that because there is, you know, there's a, some pretty interesting things that can take place. So I just want to thank you guys for uh, hanging out with me today. Uh, I'm going to be back here in 30 minutes. Um, or I'm not going to be back here. I'm going to be back here in just a, uh, just a minute so I can end the video and I can start the prospecting Q&A after show. Um, if you want to share the page out, please do so. Make sure to turn on your notifications and the, your like for the intuitive prospector page. <clears throat> Excuse me, and uh, let's get ready to do a little uh, prospecting, uh, spiritual prospecting for your own spiritual gold. I was going to, um, I have a new, um, some new music, so I was just trying to kind of mix it up a little bit, but I don't know where my song, I don't know where my song went. So uh, I'll be back here in just a minute. Uh, we'll carry on the show um, for the prospecting Q and after show. Have a great week. Thanks for tuning in this morning. Uh, really appreciate you. I appreciate all the spiritual prospectors and. Uh, I will see you next Monday at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time here on the Intuitive Prospector channel. Make sure to turn it on, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And uh, we'll see you next Monday for another Metaphysical Mocha Mondays with your host, me, Mark Clean Heart. So, all right, guys. Have a great rest of your week. Let's see if I was trying to find. Where is it? No. All right. We'll do it for next time. All right, guys. Have a great week. Namaste. Thank you.